There are foods that you are currently eating, which have been shown to increase the risk to develop multiple sclerosis, and if you have the condition, have been associated with worsening outcomes. Here's the worst part. You probably don't even know that you're eating them. My name is Aaron Boster. I'm an MS neurologist in Columbus, Ohio. And in this video, we're gonna delve into how to identify and avoid these foods. Don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. Today's video, we're going to be tackling a really important topic, food quality. I hate it when doctors say, It doesn't matter what you eat, honey. It has no impact on your disease. Because that's hogwash. It absolutely does. And if you look at all of the proposed diets to help people impacted by MS, they're varied. Some suggest no meat. Some suggest only meat. Some say don't eat milk. Some say go ahead and eat milk. It leaves us a bit confused. But if there is one theme, one trend, one truism, which holds true across all MS diets, it's food quality. And that's really what I wanna focus on today. I need you to understand the impact of food quality. And I'm actually gonna share some very, very concerning data that eating ultra processed foods can have a massive negative impact on your disease outcomes. So get out a pen and paper, Get ready to learn about food quality, and let's jump in. I'd like to start by level setting our understanding and introducing three definitions. Unprocessed or minimally processed foods, processed foods, and then ultra processed foods. So let's take each one of them in turn. The first term I'd like to discuss are unprocessed or minimally processed foods. These are whole foods, single ingredient foods, which are found in nature. So for example, if you pick an apple off the tree, that's an unprocessed food. Same thing with any vegetable that you get from the garden. Also applies to fresh fish or a fresh cut of meat. These are foods that have no additive ingredients, no preservatives, coloring, etc., etc. They are nutrient dense and oftentimes many of them have a high amount of fiber. Now, minimally processed foods are when you take that apple and you cut it up, all right? So by cutting the apple, you're processing it. Or you take that fresh piece of fish and you grill it on the stove. That's a minimally processed foods. As we talk about various types of food quality, unprocessed or minimally processed foods are gonna hold a very, very high bar for high food quality. Next, I like to discuss processed foods. Now for starters, Saying something is processed does not mean that it's unhealthy. And in fact, the majority of foods that humans consume have been processed in some way. That simply means that it's been slightly altered from its original form, oftentimes to extend its shelf life or to make it easier for us to eat. Oftentimes, a processed food will have some added salt or sugar or oil, but you can still easily identify it as a real food. Examples of processed foods would be things like canned beans, or plain yogurt, or whole grain bread, or even frozen peas. Processing is convenient and can be a healthy option for many people. Lastly, I'd like to talk about ultra-processed foods. Now, ultra-processed foods are highly, highly modified and typically have a long list of ingredients to include things like stabilizers and emulsifiers and preservatives and food colorings and flavor additives and a host of other things which are added to the food. They're so manipulated that they look nothing like their original component parts. Think about uh, potato chips or soda pop or instant noodles. Ultra processed foods include things that you can't find in your home kitchen. And they're made by companies with a goal of profit. Quite literally, they're invented to be rapidly consumed, they're invented to be very cheap to make, and they're invented so that you eat a lot of them in preference as opposed to eating unprocessed or minimally processed foods. Ultra processed foods are bad for you and bluntly should be avoided. But let's jump into the topic a little deeper. I think it's helpful to understand 
how ultra-processed foods are fabricated because they're not cooked or baked in a kitchen, they're literally made in a factory. And they almost always start with animal feed. So really cheap, inexpensive crops that we would normally give to livestock, things like corn or soybeans. They process these down into the molecular parts. So they'll take corn, for example, and they'll turn it into a pile of starches, a bunch of protein isolates, and then some fats. They will remove the coloring, they'll remove the natural flavors, and unfortunately, they remove most of the nutrients and minerals. Once they get it down in the component parts, they can use chemistry to recombine them and to create any shape, any flavor, any texture, anything that they want. They will use chemicals like emulsifiers to bind them back together. The taste has been removed, no problem. They'll add new flavorings to make it taste the way they want. The color has been removed, no problem. They'll add in coloring to make it the way that they want. They literally redo this process and then they will extrude it and make the shape of a potato chip. So when you grab, say, a Pringles potato chip, that's not a potato. In fact, it barely has any potatoes in it at all. Now it tastes amazing on purpose and it's really easy to eat them. In fact, you can burn through an entire like container of Pringles before you even realize it, and that's done on purpose. When you start to think about ultra-processed foods, it becomes really scary because in essence, it's not a food. It's an edible uh, chemical substance which is masquerading as a food. That's downright scary. What's also downright scary is that ultra-processed foods have infiltrated almost everything that's eaten in the United States and in the UK. Some statistics suggest that 60, upwards of 80% of all calories consumed by Americans are ultra-processed. And there is a growing body of literature suggesting that ultra-processed foods might be the reason that we see such extreme obesity and metabolic conditions like type 2 diabetes skyrocketing in places like the United States. Now, I want to give a quick shout out to this doctor, a guy named Chris Van Tolken. He wrote an amazing book called Ultra Processed People, and I've been reading this book as I've been learning about ultra processed foods. And so if you want to up your game on this topic, I would definitely check out his podcasts or his YouTube, or I would read the book like I've done here. Now, as I've been studying the topic of ultra processed foods, it's super scary, and it looks like ultra processed foods might have some role in a lot of human illnesses. But I'm an MS neurologist, and this is a channel where we educate, empower, and energize people impacted by MS. And the reason I'm talking to you today about ultra-processed foods is because of its impact in multiple sclerosis. Now, there are two papers that I wanted to talk to you about today. The first paper I like to discuss was published in May of 2023, so it's a pretty recent paper. And it came out in a good journal, the European Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Now, the lead author was black, and the paper's entitled, Higher Consumption of Ultra-Processed Foods, an Increased Likelihood of Central Nervous System Demyelination in a Case-Controlled Study in Australian Adults. Now, that's a mouthful. But in essence, what the authors did is they looked at populations within Australia, and they stratified the amount of ultra-processed foods they ate. And they looked at how many of them went on to develop the first demyelinating event, so a clinically isolated syndrome, if you will. And what they found was really bothersome. It was statistically significant that the folks that ate the highest amount of ultra-processed foods had a very slight increased risk to develop a first demyelinating event. That's actionable to me. I spent a lot of time in clinic identifying people that might be at risk to go on to get MS. And I tell them things like avoid smoking because that lowers the risk or make sure that we supplement their vitamin D3 because that can lower the risk. This gets added to that list. Avoiding ultra-processed foods looks like it might have a protective effect to help you avoid going on to have your first demyelinating event. The second paper I like to talk about is even more bothersome to me. It was also recently published uh, in January of 2023 in a good journal called Frontiers of Neurology. The title of this article is Ultra-Processed Food Consumption is Associated with Multiple Sclerosis Severity. 
And in this paper, they looked at populations of people with multiple sclerosis, and they looked at two things, the amount of ultra-processed foods they ate and the severity of their disease. And what they found out was startling. Compared to people impacted by MS that had a smaller amount of ultra-processed foods in their diet, the folks with MS that ate a larger amount of ultra-processed foods had associated increased severity of their disease. And it was a lot. So we talk about an odds ratio, which is the odds of having something happen. Eating lots of ultra-processed foods increased the odds of a more severe disease by two and a half times. That's really scary information to read. So we have identified a serious problem, ultra-processed foods. They are probably contributing to the obesity epidemic here in the United States, as well as the massive uptick in metabolic conditions like type 2 diabetes. In the setting of MS, there's emerging data that they may in a small way contribute to developing demyelination, and there's clear evidence that eating lots of ultra-processed foods can increase MS severity. So what do we do? For starters, I want you to become aware of when something is ultra-processed. I'll share two quick ways that you can do that. I need you to start to read labels. I need you to look at the back of the label of anything that you're going to put in your mouth. If that label has more than five ingredients, that's a red flag. And if any of the ingredients are things that you can't easily find in your home kitchen, it's probably an ultra-processed food. So we're looking for things like emulsifiers and stabilizers. We're looking for food additives and colorings or flavorings. All of these things are tip-offs that what you're looking at is ultra-processed. Also, if any of the ingredients are words that you can't pronounce, that's not a food and that's a chemical and that's ultra-processed. Second, I'll share with you a really cool app that I found, Open Food Facts. Now, this was a free download. I don't have a relationship with that company, but it's a really cool free app. You can scan foods in the grocery store you scan the barcode and it will tell you the degree of processing. I've been using this when I go shopping at Kroger's and I've been surprised at what I've learned. Now, becoming aware that ultra-processed foods exist and learning how to identify them is literally the tip of the iceberg. We're just scratching the surface of this topic. So if you would like to learn more, let me know in the comments section and I can create follow-up videos. As always, thank you for learning about MS with me. And if you would like to help this channel grow, the most impactful thing you could do is watch another video. So consider clicking the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video or my next live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.